What's up, everyone? I'm back with another OBS audio engineering kind of video. I've made two videos about how to use voice meter, how to separate your music out for your stream, and here's the reality of it. Voice meter is just okay. Honestly, as someone who's worked in audio for 10 years, it's actually like kind of bad, but for a lot of people, it's the only solution for now, and I feel it. I wish I could say there was a better free mixer software out there, but there kind of really isn't. But for me, it got to the point where I was just like, you know what? My audio interface is dying anyways. I'm not actually getting good gain structure on my mic. So I bought a Go XLR Mini and here's the too long, didn't watch the whole video thing. This thing rules, okay? Honestly, my mic sounds better than it ever did when I was running it through an interface and using OBS filters, especially because I use a broadcast mic, a dynamic mic, which requires a lot of gain. And the Go XLR Mini and the regular Go XLR do not require a cloud lifter or a dynamic mic. For those who don't know, a mic like an SM7 or this BCD1 from MXL, they require a lot of gain to get it up to a usable volume. And what a cloud lifter does is it lets you use a regular mic pre on like a Scarlet and be able to bring this mic up to a good volume without turning the gain all the way to 100. So instead of just talking about it, I'm going to show you guys not only how I set up my mic, but I'm also going to show you how I'm currently separating my music for my stream. I want to make it very, very clear because I haven't said it enough in the other two videos. You can get a copyright strike while streaming. So it's not 100% safe to play copyrighted music on your stream even though it's not going to your VOD. Does it happen often? No, but it does happen. So when you open your Go XLR app, it looks something kind of like this. Uh, it actually gives you three default settings to work with. It's all just the default settings for audio. It just comes with different colors for the lights, but you can change all that stuff down here. They actually recently made it so you can pick your colors, and but it's really nice to have lighting on the Go XLR. You can have it show the meter of your volume, or you can just have it show how much your stuff is turned up. But the first thing you want to do when you open the software is actually go into routing and make sure that you can hear your mic and your headphones because you really don't want to dial in your mic without hearing it. Keep in mind, it does sound a little better in OBS. I think the broadcast stream mix does have like a slightly better quality to it than the mic channel being on your headphones. But you, you essentially have four outputs for this thing. Chat mic, which is what you set for like your Discord, your Windows input settings. That's what you want to use in game like if you do push to talk in whatever game you're playing you want chat mic to be your default input or else the people in game might hear your music they might hear the game and what you also want to do is turn off samples and the reason for that is because specifically with the go xlr mini there is no sampler so that's actually the output we're going to be using for our music that we want on our stream keep in mind that if you do it this way you won't be able to control that with the music fader, but I still do use the music fader when I'm playing games. So if I want to turn down Spotify, iTunes, whatever, I like to have that fader still be for music. So we don't, while we're here, just make sure samples is only going to your headphones. We'll get more on that later. So for mic, the first thing you got to do is go to mic setup. And this is where you set your mic gain. I now sound how my mic sounds going straight in. So as you can see, it's going a little loud. So I'm going to nudge that down a little bit. Try to find a good volume that works at the distance that you usually are from your mic. So for me, I'm usually about here and I do talk a little louder when I'm streaming or when I'm recording like right now. So I'm going to say that right here is good because it is clipping occasionally, but that's only because I'm recording and I like to sound louder when I record. But also make sure your mic type is set correctly. 3.5 millimeter would be like a headset, your typical gaming headset or any type of microphone you bought that just uses a headphone jack input. 3.5 millimeter is the size of a standard headphone jack. Condenser mic would be, you know, your AT2020s. I feel like if you're watching this and you don't know what a condenser mic is, you should probably look it up because they're the only ones that require phantom power. And if you click that button, it's going to send phantom power to your mic. So make sure you know if your mic needs phantom power before you hit that button. But the dynamic button is what allows my mic to be audible without using an external piece of hardware like a cloud lifter. For now, we know that this is good. So 52 dB is fine. So now that we're back in here, the gate in the Go XLR is weird. If you set the attenuation too high, 
you almost get like this hard on off effect. I've been using noise gates for a long, long time because audio is like my profession outside of streaming and YouTube. And I would say that the attenuation is a combination of the parameters of ratio and range. If you know what those words mean, that's great. If not, you don't have to worry about it. But for me, I think the sweet spot for attenuation with the Go XLR is about 20%. That gives it enough so that when I go off the mic like this, it cuts off a lot of the sound, which means that if something's happening outside my room, my mic's not really going to pick it up. But also it gives me the freedom to speak a little quieter and still get picked up by my mic. If you turn the attenuation up too high, like this, all the way up here, I can't really get quiet or else it's going to cut off everything I say. See what I mean? You can't get quiet if the attenuation's too high. Even right now, my voice is cutting in and out. So... I say 20% is probably 20, 25% is the sweet spot where it's cutting off the stuff that's too quiet. I'm actually going to bump this threshold down a little bit. Now, the threshold number is going to depend on you, your mic, your speaking volume. I'm going to keep turning it down until I hear every consonant I say. So for right now, I'm thinking minus 36 is good. I can still back away and get picked up by my mic, but I also can still go over here and over here and barely be heard. For me, that's important. You can also test with like your keyboard, I guess. I have a pretty clicky keyboard and it does get picked up if I smack it too hard. But that typically gets cut out by the game I'm playing, the music I'm playing. So right now we're gonna chill at, uh, let's say, I'm just gonna do like minus 38. I turn my gain down, so my settings get lowered. Obviously, if you run more gain, your threshold will also go up. Attack, 10 milliseconds, you want that gate to open as soon as you start talking. Release, that's just how long after you're done talking it takes for the gate to fully close. Anywhere between like 150 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds is pretty good, but you can run it the slowest you want, but just keep in mind that that's gonna let a lot of background noise come in after you're done talking. I'm just gonna put it at like 500 for now. So for the equalizer, there is a simple way to do it and an even simpler way to do it, which is just bass mid treble. If you are not super picky about the way your mic sounds, just leave it like this. Mid-range is your friend when it comes to your speaking voice. That's what's gonna cut through the most, especially in gaming. Keep in mind, the regular full-size Go XLR has a de which affects syllables like S, T. So for me, I turned on fine tuning just so I could find the exact frequencies of my voice that I wanted to change. And my recommendation on how to do this is to just find things you want to take out and don't add anything. So I moved this slider around while I had this turned up and I found the frequency of my voice that I didn't like. So you move this left to right. And for me, I felt like 2.1 makes my voice sound really nasally. So I turned it down, but I, you don't want to turn it down too much because if you suck all the life out of your voice, it starts to sound a little unnatural. And it also doesn't give your voice the ability to cut through things like intense moments in games, loud sections of music, stuff like that. So you don't want to take too much away from your voice, but you do want to take out anything that just annoys you. I did take 90 hertz out of my voice just because I didn't want to get too boomy when I got up on my mic. As you can see, when I turn this frequency up like this, you can kind of hear my breath hitting the mic. And then this top one I use because this is just the part of my voice that I feel is where my S's sit. So if you go like S and you turn it up, S, see how it's painful to listen to like this? And I'm sorry they to hear this. You can move this around and find the part of your voice that's like the most sibilant. So like for most people, I think it's around seven, but 6.9 seems to work fine for me. And I just pull that out a little bit just to make my voice not so harsh. Once again, if you pull out too much of this, your voice will lose its presence and you wanna have a good presence in your voice. Mid range and top end are very, very important. You don't want too much of it because it can make your voice sound filtered, but you also don't wanna take too much away because it make your voice sound dull. Which brings us to the compressor. I would say with a dynamic mic, the compressor, you can be a little bit more generous with it. With a condenser mic, condenser mics pick up a lot more of what's going on around you. So even though you have your voice gated, if you compress your voice too hard, anytime the gate opens, you'll also hear the reflection of the room around you. So if you have a condenser mic, maybe start with your ratio a little lower than 8.1. But for me, I like 8.1. I like the fullness that it brings to my voice when I compress that heavy. I have my attack two milliseconds. Not the fastest setting, but very, very fast. And that's because when I approach the mic, if I do something explosive with my voice, it's gonna catch it right away. Compression being 
the leveling out of your voice to make sure that everything you say is about a consistent volume. Once again, if you want to know more about what a compressor is, it's like a whole different video. The more you compress your voice, the more equal volume everything you say is going to be. Also keep in mind that if you compress really hard, you may kind of lose track of where your gate needs to be. So from time to time, I will double check by turning the threshold all the way back up to make sure that my gate is set correctly. So see how if I move back and forth like this and I move off the mic, it kind of is a varying amount of volume. The more you compress by bringing your threshold down, the more the sound of your voice gets consistent. Now, originally your makeup gain is gonna be down at zero. And what you wanna do is compress your voice to the point where almost everything you say sounds like it's being pulled down, but still audible. And then use the makeup gain to bring the volume back to where it was before you brought the threshold down. Once again, you can mess around with these parameters and see what sounds best to you. This is just what works best for the way I talk when I'm streaming. And like I said, the gating and whatnot, it's not too big of a deal when I'm gaming, it's like hearing my keyboard and stuff. And like, there is still a bit of an on off to the sound of my mic right now especially if I turn away. But that's just something that I adjust little by little all the time based on watching my streams back and kind of being like, oh, maybe my mic was too gated or maybe my voice needs compressed more because I screamed at the top of my lungs and it blew up the mic a little bit too much. So if you're someone who varies a lot from talking to screaming, more compression is going to help you. Compression is also going to help a lot if you are an ASMR streamer or someone who always speaks with a soft voice. But you'll also want to use lower gating. You'll probably want to turn your gate attenuation all the way Way down to 10 percent and then also mic monitor is the amount of your mic that you hear in your headphones if you have the mic in your headphones at all so if you like hearing yourself a little bit if you use closed back headphones or noise isolating headphones you will probably want to hear yourself a little bit just so you know how loud you're speaking outside of your headphones i use open back headphones so i turn down my mic monitor quite a bit I do like to hear it a little bit so I know that it's working, but I don't want it to be too loud because I want to be able to hear what's going on outside of my voice. Also make sure your headphone level is set correctly. Keep in mind that if you have it set too low, you might turn things up too high on your mixer and it'll be too loud for your stream, but you won't know it. For me, I like to run these around 85 to 90% depending on what game I'm playing. I turn up my headphones a little higher and shooters because I want to hear footsteps and stuff like that, but I also don't want to blow my stream up with gunshot audio. I can turn down the game a bit for the stream and I can still hear it a lot. So that's important to remember. My line in is set to 0% right now because I do have my other computer plugged in, but I don't like hearing the cable noise when I'm not using that computer. So I have it turned all the way down. The line out is only important if you are running your Go XLR audio to a second PC. If you're doing a dual PC setup, this is important. If you're running a PS4 or something, it's cool that you now have the option to run your console in your go xlr and then you can affect how much you hear it and it also goes to your stream if you have it routed here on your stream mix so the stream mix is everything that goes into obs when you go into obs you're going to open your settings tab and inside audio set your mic to broadcast stream mix so now Everything I do here not only affects what I hear, but affects what my stream hears. But like I said, I took samples off the stream mix. It's still in my ears, but it's off the stream mix. And the reason I did that is because in my sound settings, my output for my windows is system. My input is chat mic. In app volume and device preferences, I have set soundtrack by Twitch to sample. So if you don't use a Go XLR or any type of external mixing software, soundtrack by Twitch will automatically route its music to go to your ears, but not get saved your VODs. If you run a Go XLR, this feature no longer works correctly because everything you hear is already going to your stream. So my solution was I don't use the sampler because I don't have one, but it has this output built into it called sample. So I might as well use it for something, right? So you can't hear the music right now, but it actually is playing. And that is the goal, is that I have music playing that only is heard if I create an audio output capture inside OBS. So what you're gonna wanna do down here is hit plus sign, audio output capture. And what I have one made already, and it's called Soundtrack by Twitch. And the device for this audio output capture is Sample, which is one of the five available outputs for the Go XLR Mini. Now you can hear my music. And the important thing you wanna do is just like in the other videos, is make sure that in your advanced audio settings, you disable the VOD track for that output, track two. 
As long as track 2 is disabled, it does not get saved to your VOD. Assuming that track 2 is the track that you chose inside OBS to be your VOD track. So my Go XLR still goes to my VODs because everything that goes through there I want to be heard, which is why we're running the soundtrack stuff separate. Now the only downside to doing it this way is my Go XLR is no longer controlling how loud soundtrack is. It still allows me to play real music, which they've already confirmed is safe to play while you're streaming, but it doesn't go to the VOD, so I don't even have to worry about it. And it's also nice to not have music in your VODs if you're someone who chops up your streams to make YouTube videos. You don't want to hear songs skipping all over the place. So as much as it is about your safety of not getting a DMCA strike, it's also about keeping your VODs easy to work with if you make content out of your streams. So yeah, it's a super cool tool. It's got a button on it that you can hold if you need to mute your mic, like if you got a cough or sneeze or something. It also has a swear button, which I like never use, but it's there, I guess. That's cool. It's a really helpful tool if you can afford one. This is also just a good way to teach you how to use gates, compressors, EQs on your voice. Even if you don't have a Go XLR, you can download free plugins from Reaper, which have more advanced gates and compressors than the stuff that OBS has built into it by default. I'll have the link to the Go XLR Mini. I'll have a link to those free plugins from Reaper all in the description below. And I also will include a link to my Discord where I'm always f happily offering free tech support to anyone who's trying to figure out how to use voice meter. If you need help setting up your Go XLR, I'm down to help you with all that stuff. My job industry doesn't really exist anymore right now, so I'm more than happy to make these videos for you guys and teach you how to improve the audio for your streams. If you want to come hang out in the stream sometime, this is the only time I'm going to say, maybe come follow me on Twitch. But yeah, let me know if there's anything I missed in the comments that you guys wish I would have talked about. Anyways, leave a like, share with your friends. I hope this helps you guys out. I will see you guys with another video very, very soon. Thanks for watching.